Hello and welcome to another SMC thing. You know, start your day with a proper cup of coffee straight from the bowels of hell. To ensure that your bowels are working for another working day. All right, well, today I just wanted to show you just a little thing about the Satanic Mac Club ROM sim and how you might have a little bit of fun making your own custom boot ROM icons. Now, those are the icons that show up when you first boot your Macintosh. And you can also change the icon that shows up for the ROM image on the actual Macintosh desktop. So for that, we're going to head on over to my desktop and load up some software. All right, so here we are on an ultra wide screen full of purple. Um, I'm going to be working inside of Krita. Now it's a free program that does have some pixel art aspects to it, which is more than convenient in our case. So I want to go new file. Uh, you want to specify that this working area is going to be 32 pixels by 32 pixels. You can leave the resolution at 300. It's pixel artwork. It's not really going to matter too much in that sense. Uh, grayscale off is fine, 8-bit integer, blah, blah, blah. Let's go ahead and create it. So here we are inside our workspace. Lots of little squares. Now I am selecting my paintbrush down here in the brush presets. I am going to pixel art, which is included within Krita as a brush and just our basic pixel art brush selected. Now you can go ahead and draw absolutely anything you want for uh, an icon image here. As long as it's not, you know, insanely complicated, it's, it's going to show up. So let's, uh, I don't know, let's just start drawing something. Uh, how about, um, I'm going to go ahead and choose some black. Just draw a little, little line and maybe it's a little boat. And it's happy. Come up down, kind of railing there. And how about, uh, Somebody sailing it. How about a little Mr. Macintosh? A little compact Mac man. That sounds about right. He's going to have a CRT screen, of course. And a little floppy drive. And a little face. Oops, not like that. Control Z, thank you. Just peacefully sailing along. Just waving at all his friends on shore. Saying, look at me, I'm off to the land of new capacitors. All right, so there's our image. Now, what are you going to do? Well, we also need to create our mask. So for this, we're going to double up our uh, image that we just created. You can click Control J and that's going to copy it directly. So now we have a clone. Uh, we're going to be working on our new one so I can hide my original. Now for ease of doing this, um, I'm just going to select a random shade of gray and fill in my backgrounds. Okay. Now for the mask, I want the line work that we did to be white. So now I can differentiate this. It's going to be white. Previously, if I were just to go ahead and fill this in with white, then if I were to fill in black again, everything would go black. So that's why we need a different shade of gray. So now I will select black and fill in the areas that were white with black. So now we have a mask. So now if I hide that layer and open our original, there we go. And now our second layer was on top of that. There's our mask. So now I want to go ahead and say file, export. Now we will be saving this as a PNG. You can name it anything you want. I'm going to call him Bodhi. One, save. Uncheck everything. Make sure that your compression is up towards the top end for smaller file size. 
deselect that layer and now we're going to save the mask layer so the same thing again file export just call him bodhi2 so you can find him easily okay save i can close this guy now we're going to be uh, moving over to my actual macintosh which has the crucible app already loaded so you click replace icon now it's going to be send it over to my net drive here we go so there's our line work selected now it's going to ask for the mask icon select bodhi2 because that's our our mask now you can do the same for the volume icon if you like or you know maybe you want to create another image that's totally separate but i'm just going to go ahead and select bodhi all over again and now I want to drag and drop the existing uh, Satanic Math Club ROM image that I've already created. Go ahead and overwrite my previous one that I had there. So now I have four files specified for a ROM image. Let's get back onto the computer. Okay, so here we are on the desktop again. I'm going to load up XG Pro for my programmer. Now we've already seen the AM29F040B chip that's included with the Satanic Mac ROM. I've already used my removal tool to get all four chips out and I've popped one inside the programmer. Now we're going to click load and we're just going to browse to our boat Mac folder and we want the first file U1. We're going to go ahead and click program. Now, this probably takes about 45 seconds to do each one. So we'll zoom ahead here until the fourth one is done. We're going to pop it in an actual machine and see what our work is done. Here is my chosen victim, uh, <laughs> a computer. And here is our ROM slot. Now, for the 2CI, you want to keep in mind that there is a sneaky little header pin that you want to remove if you are going to be using the ROM slot. So we're going to take it and gingerly put it in. And by ginger, I mean violently. Okay, now it's plugged in. Let's look at the monitor. When you start the machine, you want to hold R to boot directly into your ROM image. Now, when you do this, you'll briefly see your icon appear. Yeah, did you see it? Did you see it? I saw it! Can you believe it? Can. You. Believe it. That's our boat guy. Well, there you go. A fun little party trick to impress your friends and maybe even your mother. Happy sailing.